So I 3D printed some knobs for my cabinet using wood filament. The trick is I printed them on my DaVinci Junior. That's right, the cartridge limited DaVinci Junior who doesn't offer wood filament. I'll show you how I did it on today's Filament Friday. I planned to print the knobs on my Fabricator Mini, but I went and cleaned up the nozzle with a wire wheel and messed it all up. So now I gotta get new nozzles. And I could use my Reflash DaVinci 1.0A, but that's got a broken wire that I can't find it in the heating element. So that thing's out of commission right now. So all that left me was my DaVinci Junior to print PLA. And this thing can only print cartridge filament. But I thought, can I feed a different filament in? I know it'll use some of the cartridge space, but why not try it? So that's what I decided to do. The first step was to take the side off, and there's two screws at the top that I'm supposed to remove, but they were broken. Apparently these were broken when I got it from Amazon, because I never touched it. But anyway, I got the side off, and then the next step was to remove the filament. So I ran the remove filament routine and was able to remove the cartridge. In a previous Filament Friday, I printed these 2020 extrusions in plastic, which matched up to the 2020 extrusion in the DaVinci Junior. So I decided to use that as a mount for the filament. And I was just going to tie strap them. If I wanted to make this permanent, I could bolt it in place. But a couple tie straps on top and then pushed it down against the tie strap that's already on the Junior made this pretty solid. So this was a great solution and a quick fix. If you're wondering why I'm doing all this instead of just inserting the spool inside the DaVinci Junior, it's because it doesn't fit. The DaVinci Junior spools are a lot smaller and there's just no space for anything bigger. So I just fed it up through the extruder, through the uh, Bowden tube and down to the hot end and then wrapped it around where the filament's supposed to go. Now the DaVinci Junior still needs to see that chip is in place. So rather than use a full cartridge here, I just decided to use a empty spool. Then maybe this will help guide the uh, e-sun filament into the extruder. At least that was the plan. So I put it all together, placed it where the filament would normally go, and then just routed the e-sun filament through that spool and it looked like it was going to work good as a pulley, just like I wanted. And then I started extruding filament and everything looked great. The junior didn't know I had different filament in place. So now let me show you the knob design that I made in Tinkercad. Here's the finished design with a hole in the bottom for the screw. But this thing was so easy to make, let me move it out of the way here, and I'll just make another one. I took a half sphere and I made it the dimensions I wanted, 30 by 30, and then I duplicated it and then used the mirror tool to make a second one and then brought one on top of the other. And I just eyeballed this so they're pretty close to perfectly touching each other and then I grouped them together as one unit. And then I brought it up a little bit so I could bring another part of the knob underneath it, which was just a cylinder. Now the original I made it 17 by 17, so let's do that here. I just adjusted 17 by 17, use the align tool so they're both centered, and then I can bring the top of the knob down so it looks about where I want it. So that looks pretty good. So now all I need to do is add the hole in the bottom, which I did with another cylinder. And this was four millimeters by four millimeters, and I needed to make it into a hole. And so now I would center this, but actually I need to lower this so it sticks out the bottom a little bit. You need to do that, otherwise it'll get lost. So now I can center it, and then all three pieces are together, and I can combine them into one solid knob. And now I've got two of them here. I need to group these together. And so the next step would be just to export this as a .stl file, load it into XYZWare, and send it to the DaVinci Junior. I sliced it at a .2 layer height and a 20% fill, saved it to the SD card, and loaded it into DaVinci Junior. And then I just follow the menu on the screen and tell it to start building. And here it is in time lapse. And you can see on the left, the eSun filament is spinning rather nicely. It's getting pulled right in and the knob is being built perfectly. <laughs> That's worked better than I thought. I used this new removal tool I got from BuildTac and, well, that was easy. 
And then I just needed to remove the supports around the bottom of this thing. Now there also was support inside the hole where the screw would go. So I decided to just use a little screwdriver to see if I can gouge some of that out. But overall this thing looked really good. So I tried measuring and centering, but in the end I just liked eyeballing it. So I put it where I wanted it, tipped it to one side, made one mark, and then I tipped it upward and made the second mark to form an X to know where to drill the hole. Now before I did that, I wanted to be able to repeat this on the other doors, so I measured it and it was 20 millimeters from one side and 22 millimeters up from the bottom. So that's not centered, but it looked good to me. So now it was time to drill. So rather than just drill, I decided to first make sure I get this thing centered. So I pushed really hard with the drill rather than using a center punch. And it looked good, and that was my guide. So then I just slowly drilled the hole. Now I didn't have to worry about opening the door because I knew behind this it was hollow. The frame doesn't come over this far. So I could drill right into this and not worry about drilling into the cabinet. And then I just drilled in and out a few times to clean out the hole and then it was ready to install the knob. So I designed the hole in the knob to accept a drywall screw and I had a long enough one to go through the door and it fit nicely. It just barely fit so I had to twist it to get it through and then once the teeth started to show through it started screwing into the knob and I could feel this thing was already grabbing nicely. I was feeling very confident that this was going to work. And then I tightened it with my power screwdriver and I could feel the knob just getting pulled right in and it was solid. It wasn't loose, it wasn't twisting, it didn't split. It was perfect. So now all I need to do is print a whole bunch more of these for the rest of the cabinets. So there you have it. Printed knobs on a DaVinci Junior. How cool is that? And if you noticed on the bed, I used build tack material. And I'm loving this stuff. I've used it on all my printers. I've used it a lot on my Fabricator Mini and printed ABS on that printer that said it can only print PLA. I got a sample of these from BuildTech, but I've been using it before they sent me samples. But I didn't know is they offer white. So this is gonna be nice for filming time lapses because sometimes black filament gets lost in the black BuildTech. Another thing they sent me was this tool that I used to remove the knob from the DaVinci Junior. And that was pretty easy removal, but some bigger prints, this thing has really been helpful. And it's nice, it's got a real thin edge, and it's kind of a weird shape so you can get into different spots. But it's thin enough that it can get underneath things, but strong enough that it doesn't bend. And then you can actually pry with this thing. So I didn't think it was that big of a deal when I got this that it's just another putty knife with a bent handle but it's not it's a lot better than that just the design of it it's truly designed for 3d printing so I recommend this thing I'm using it more and more and I'm loving it so that's it for this week I hope you enjoyed it if you did give me a thumbs up and if you like the channel and you haven't subscribed please subscribe that way I know you like what you're seeing and you want to see more and if you want to help support the channel, a dollar to my Patreon account. should be a link right up here. goes a long way. So that's it. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.